How's it going, Raiders? My name is Ryan, and this is TRC, and you are listening to the finale episode for Battle of Maine. We are on episode 29. Without further ado, tanks, everyone's ready. Pull timer on you. The heroes have made it to the glorious finale. All right, here we go, guys. Set up your chairs, focus up, let's do this. All right, guys, get buffed up. Okay, so we want to soak the annihilation. Get your shit together. Then we want to target the annihilator. Put the big girl panties on. Move back to avoid damage from eradication. Uh, I think I've disconnected. Four. Then we target the decimator. Can we pull already? Then Three, we five. target boss. I hope you can swim in molten lava. Let's kill this dragon. Welcome back, Raiders. As I've already said, you are listening to the Raiders Confessional Podcast, where we talk all things in-game PvE content-wise in the world of Azeroth. My name is Ryan, and joining me today, as always, are my two co-hosts from the lands of Denmark and one Canada, Oreo and Marty. What is up, my friends? Marty, my man. (laughs) You're eating ice cream on stream, and you're not sharing. The Twitch chat is already in a rage. I've seen that. I mean, I, I have more. Just come, just come over. Just come over and I'll share. That's twice now on camera, be it on stream or off stream for this podcast, where one of the two of you have had ice cream on your on the video feed. Oreo's wife came and got ice cream one day in the middle of him and I on camera and didn't offer any, and now Marty's eating some and not offering any. I don't know if this is exactly a healthy working relationship here, guys. But... Great news, guys. Uh, Before we kind of jump into things, I just wanted to say a big general thank you. Welcome to each and every single one of you listening on the live stream or on your audio podcatcher of choice. This is the finale episode for not only Legion content for BFA, or sorry, Legion content for World of Warcraft. uh, As we move into BFA content, I am tongue-tied today. Um, But as you can see, my name is Ryan, and I also like to party. As we go this finale episode for today, we are revealing our mains on today's show. And like I said, thank you for each and every single one of you that has been here along the way, um, be it today for the first time or any past episodes. Uh, whether you're a listener, you've been a guest in the show, a co-host, uh, it certainly has been a fun ride. But yes, before we get into today's content, I'd like to go around the table. Oreo, starting with you, what have you been up to, my man? Uh, not very much. Getting ready for the pre-patch to just drop in here in a couple of days. Yes, yes, indeed. What about you, Marty? Hmm. I haven't really touched World of Warcraft at all, to be honest. I, I think after we finished off and I didn't have to go into beta, I went in full vacation mode. And I think I'm I'm probably going to stay in here until we get a little bit closer to BFA. I, well, I will log in on, on Wednesday for us uh, when the when the pre-patch la- um, is launching just to see what's, what's in there. But, but besides that, I think I'm in vacation mode, to be honest. Yeah. Hence uh... the ice cream. Yeah, Twitch chat, for those of you saying the Twitch episode 28, it's lying. Um, it shows in my dashboard right now that it says episode 29, so don't blame me. But uh, hey, Marty. Alt F4. One Alt little, F4. That will fix it. <laughs> one little piece of advice, Marty. World of Warcraft is a nice lady, and if you mm-hmm. go stretches of time without touching her, she starts to think you don't like her anymore. You know, you got to show her some affection, give her some love and some tender care, um, mm-hmm. and get in there, well, man, and get things done. I was in there today and, and <laughs> played a little bit around on my holy cow and got a guild invite, so everything's fine. <laughs> she knows she knows I love her. Oh uh, yeah, that you did. I, I will give you credit there. But as for myself, like Oreo, just been kinda of getting ready for the pre patch, been spending a little bit of time out of game. I'm just trying to enjoy the summer months before launch hits and things go back to the grind, you know? It's gonna be quite the two weeks of trying to get raid ready and then taken off from there. So hopefully things will not be as intensive for long stretches of time. Like we saw with Legion, you know, it felt like pretty much up until we were well into Antorus before things kind of got to a point where you could 
stop logging in every day and doing your dailies. You know, obviously people were still doing that, but you know, it, it, I didn't really ever get to a point where I felt like if I didn't log in, that I was neglecting something until we were about halfway through Antorus that, and I got to a point where, you know, my elemental shaman was 975, had maxed artifact weapon, uh, all that jazz, and was able to, you know, only log on for raids and do whatever else I wanted in the meantime. But I really hope we don't get to that point in BFA. I hope that the amount of content that we have available to us stays the same, um, but I hope we get to a point where maybe that content won't be as necessary for a progression raider, so to speak. You know, obviously, if you're not a progression raider and you play the game more casually, maybe those circumstances are different for you. But as all three of us are progression raiders, that was the case for us. Um, kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about today before we kind of get into the show is I wanted to give a brief layout. So on today's show, we're going to talk about what were some of the criteria for each one of us in terms of how we figured out what our mains were? What was the process we went through to determine what main we finally are going with as of this point in time? You know, and, and go from there. Um, I'd like to take a moment and maybe also look back at, you know, what have your thoughts been as we've gone through this battle for a main series? You know, how has it changed your perspective and approach to deciding mains learning about your classes you know i because I, I know for me personally in past expansions i've just said well what class is doing well and which of the classes that are doing well which one looks fun to me and i just ran with that you know i didn't do as extensive research as we have done now with testing and all that stuff um so i know my perspective has changed a little bit but i'd like to go around the table and touch base on those things and at the end the last third before oreo has to leave um we will do the big reveal but that being said, uh, maybe we'll just kind of jump into things here because I know we're crunched for time. So, Marty, I, I'd like to maybe present the question to you first. Um, you know, is I know you typically tend to steer clear of beta uh, and stuff like that because you don't want to spoil things for yourself. But uh, you've kind of for, been forced into a situation where you've kind of had to forego some of your usual things and get in there and get some testing done um, and stuff like that. But as you've gone through all of this and as we've gone through this series... You know, has your perspective on terms of going through the classes, figuring out which one to play, changed at all? And if so, how? I don't know, because I actually, slight spoiler alert, I sort of knew what class I was <laughs> going to play before we actually started doing this. Um, but it was, it was fun to go through, actually, because, you know... Uh, you get to think about okay this is actually pretty good fun as well this could actually be a potential and so i sort of knew what i wanted to choose but it was just good to go through a thing just to see if if i felt like the choice was actually the correct one as well um so yeah it, it, it's been a uh, a ride i'd say well now was it di did you find it difficult to get in there and get adequate testing and a feel for each class done without spoiling things for yourself no, not really. <clears throat> I think the the main issue for me was just time, really, because I, uh, I I've just been in a period of time where I've been more busy than usual. A lot of things in my, in my private sphere has been happening, and um, so it, it was more like a time issue than actual get in there and and not getting too spoiled. Because um, as, as I've said a few times through the series, that uh, we actually the storylines actually split up, so there's a horde, horde storyline and an alliance storyline. So I just stuck to horde because I'm going to play alliance when when the um, expansion hits. So, um, so in in that regard, it, it's been fairly easy this time around, actually. Yeah. So let's take this and say we're two years from today. We're at the end of BFA, you know, give or take two years, obviously. Um, we're going into whatever expansion comes next. How do you foresee, you know, doing this process again? Would you do it the same? Would you do things differently? You know, what what have your thoughts been on from that perspective up to this point now that you've gone through all this? I, I, w I would hope that I had, I, I'll have more time to actually do so because I would love to, because the way that we we have done it, each of us is focusing on one spec. But I would love because I think you guys have been doing where you you've been checking out all the specs uh, 
to a certain extent. Um, so that's definitely something I wa wanted to have time to do as well, to, to actually, so we actually can have a conversation about the specs because I didn't really always feel like I could con contribute to the conversation because I didn't have the time to actually check it out. So yeah. I think it's more like a time aspect. I would love to see if I could, could make sure that I had more time um, next time around. Sure. And, and I do have to admit, uh, I tested probably... 80% of the, the, the specs out there. Uh, Oreo, I think, is the one that has done every single spec. There are certain few specs that I just have never have had interest in trying out. Mm. Um, and so I just, and, right, right off the bat, I knew that wasn't something I was going to be interested in. So unless that, that particular spec fell on my lap for that, that week's episode, mm. I didn't really bother too much. No, and, and, and that, I think that's one of my issues. Well, that Monk, for instance, I, have, I, it, I don't it doesn't interest me in that class for some reason and it's just not it doesn't suit my play style or whatever so um it, it, that's was was one of the harder ones to get through for me um and yeah so i definitely have a few classes where i'm like this is interesting do i, I don't really want this <laughs> yeah well spoiler alert marty's playing monk okay so on to oreo um <laughs> Yeah, so so Oreo, I, I guess I, I pose the same questions to you. You know, uh, you know, what have your thoughts been going through all this? Uh, I think it's been a really good experience to be able to, like you said, usually you already have your idea of what you want to play from what you you just carry it on pretty much from where you've been. But to actually go through everything, uh, like you said, I did test pretty much all of them just for fun, just to see what's going on with everything, how things are changing. Um, I feel like that's a really good way to figure out if you want to move on from something. Because a lot of people, you know, they've played Rep Paladin since vanilla when they were just a buff machine. Or they've played Mage since then, and they just continuously play that through the ups and the downs and the spec. But to actually go through and look at how everything's looking going forward, and, you know, maybe you like something more than what you were doing before. Um, that was... I guess that was something that I really enjoyed going through this project with. Now, has it changed your approach to picking a main as opposed to other expansions, or has has it not really changed too much for you? Uh, I think, yes, it has, because usually, as I said before, I would pretty much just carry forward with whatever I was playing before. Um, but now going into the beta and really testing things out, seeing how much something that I've played a lot has changed, and... I didn't really like the changes or I was just kind of neutral or I really liked the changes depending on how that was, uh, really helped kind of pinpoint what I wanted to end up meaning. Sure. Well, like I know for myself, I, like I've already stated early on as the example, um, I typically have looked at and waited to see what classes were performing well and, and, were speculated to do well on live. And then of those classes, I kind of look to see which one I tend to kind of like more. Um, and I just run with, you know, I wouldn't even do a lot of testing. I would just learn the class and go. Um, but I got to say from doing this, um, it, it's really changed my perspective. It really forced me to go through each and every class. And, you know, some weeks I did stuff. I, you know, classes I never thought I would enjoy, never had intended to try survival hunter being an example um, and I just really enjoyed it, you know. Uh, Arms Warrior, same thing. I just, it's never been a class I've been interested in. I've always liked Fury. Um, why wouldn't you want to run around with two two handers? You know, you just look like a badass. Uh, but yeah, and so you know, I did some arms testing, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and and to be honest, I I found once I had tried arms, I ended up not liking Fury, so to speak. So um, that that was uh. A different case. Oh, my screen's going crazy there. There we go. Fixed it. Um, but yeah, so I, I, this has been an interesting experience for me as well. Um, and I'd say it's been really fun. Um, it's definitely been neat to kind of listen to the different perspectives as Marty and Ori and I have gone through all this and kind of talk to these guys off air. Um, you know, I've had the ability to kind of sit back and be the last one to fill out the spreadsheet for each week and kind of see these guys as they fill it out earlier. And um, it, it, I will say it was kind of interesting that there were certain common phrases that were used for the different categories or styles of answers. And in the earlier weeks, everybody's answers were very 
unique to each and every single one of us. And then by the kind of towards the end is like, if one person always put like high, medium or low for a certain category and the other person put this long description, whatever, towards the end of the, you know, the project there, everybody was putting a high, medium or low for that particular category and stuff like that. So it was kind of funny to watch that. And I think I did catch one of you doing my, my state criterion for, will this be your main on one of the last uh, episode or two for the spreadsheet. So that was kind of funny. But um, I kind of posed the question to myself as, as the kind of the spearhead of this particular podcast and the project for two years down the road when we move to the next expansion. I, I certainly hope that we're still going strong. Uh, whether or not Oreo and I have been through another six or seven guilds, please, God, no. Um, I'm very optimistic with the group we've put together right now and, and the officers and the core of that. But, you know, two years from now, let's say we're still in the podcast and that kind of stuff. Um, I would certainly like to rehash the battle for a main series. Obviously, the battle for a main title may have lost its relevance since it tied really well into battle for you know battle for um, Azeroth, and you know maybe we'll readapt the title once we figure out what the next expansion's name is. But I'd certainly like to do this project again. We reach every single week. We talk this about a class or two. Area too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm retiring from WoW. Uh, <laughs> but you know, so I, I would certainly love to to rehash this project. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe we kind of change up how we look at things or address this a little bit, you know? Um, but I, I think it was, I think it went really well for all things considering this was our first go at it. And I think we found as each and every week, we were able to talk through each of the classes a little bit quicker. So we started having to get more than one class on each episode regularly as opposed to early on, but yeah, so um, so the next category I kind of want to go through, and obviously we'll roundtable it again, but I, I want to talk about what was your criterion when you, you know, at the end of this project, obviously Marty made up his mind early on. He's the old guy, so it's kind of hard to teach an old guy, you know, new tricks, so to speak. But, um, you know, what what was your criterion? What were your, your points of consideration in terms of picking your main? What were your influences, that kind of stuff, and, you know, uh, kind of how you went about it from that perspective? So, Oreo, I guess we'll start with you since so we started Ma Marty last time. So, what I was looking at, and I guess I can really kind of contribute this to uh, to preach as well, is the general feel of how things felt. You know that numbers are numbers, and they'll go up, they'll go down, um, but overall how something feels is something that can't really change. Um, so... When I was looking at specs, you know, I was like, how does it feel on the go? How does it feel? Do you have to stand still a lot? Do you have to move? Uh, do you have big cooldowns? Like, do you have small windows that you have to do something? Like, how does it feel if you mess up? <laughs> Is kind of the biggest thing. Um, so, with that in mind, it was maybe more tuned to specs and classes that were a consistent output as opposed to short windows um so that's why you know i i really enjoyed classes where you're not focused on say like a combustion window or um, anything like that or focused on just continual output and then also have something that feels really great to press like a big cooldown is pretty exciting as well so Now, did you have any considerations beyond just yourself when you were making your decision? Yeah, I did. I did. It, it comes down to group play as well, um, how you can fit in with the group. Obviously, if you're running with a group that's very melee heavy, you really want to be that guy that rolls another melee. Um, if you don't have healers, you want to be that guy that rolls not a healer, things like that. Yeah which I think is all valid point. Uh, you know, I ask questions like that because depending on how each and every single person plays the game, uh, your criteria and your influences are going to be different. Obviously with Marty, myself and Oreo, we're all part of mythic guilds and sometimes on progression, you kind of have to put your personal opinions and likes to the side um, for the benefit of the group as a whole. Um, so sometimes, you know, even though I may want to play class A, class B is another class that I, can enjoy as well. Maybe I won't enjoy it as much, but I can find enjoyment with it. Um, and that class is going to be better suited to being progress the group through content. Uh, and so that might be the better choice. You know, obviously this isn't going to be the case for everybody. Sometimes other groups may have different philosophies, which is fine. 
you know, it's uh, it's up to each and every group and every individual how they want to choose, you know, play the game and how they choose to spend their fifteen dollars. So, um, you know, it just with us, I know I, I felt like that was pretty task worthy that question because it was very much the case for us to you know consider the group and the people we were playing with. Uh, Marty, how about you, man? What, what was your criterion, even though you'd already made your decision? Yeah, well, I sort of had made my decision, but I was still open to be surprised and, and to maybe, maybe there's something else that's more interesting or whatever. So it's not like it was 100% set in stone, but a thing like halfway through the series, that's when, um, because we also had a, like a, a guilt deadline that they needed when uh, what to what we were going to switch to. So I, I think halfway through, um, I sort of knew that this is where I was going to, to go, but my criteria has been that that the chance for it to be a pure DPS class was very, very low because I like to be able to perform different roles. I, I, I love all aspects of the game. Um, so for me, it was really important that it was a hybrid class that could do multiple things things and not just be a a pure dps class for instance so it had to to be that so uh, because also because i'd I'd, I'd, if if for instance i chose to to go dps um then q times for instance i would like to be able to go in there as a tank or healer if, if i'm if i'm not up for waiting that particular day or whatever um and also just because i really really enjoy just trying everything out and and do things my way throughout an expansion so so that was definitely like a criteria that um that uh yeah it, it should be able to perform uh, multiple roles and another criteria that i had was that uh, i was not going to be a healer i was going to be a dps as uh, my main spec because i've also pretty much always been healing uh, i want to try and switch to a dps and try try that out for for proper rating and see how it is and but but still be useful in case we you know needed a healer or a tank for instance to to able to switch out um so yeah so that's definitely been a criteria as well windwalker monk incoming yep <laughs> um you know as for myself things were a little bit different you know oreo and i were have been playing with each other since um Nighthold and have gone through all the guild swaps. Uh, I think he and I have been in the same guild uh, with every guild I've been a part of in Legion. But, you know, before we made the decision to form the TRC guild and start that endeavor, um, we had a guild that we were, like, things are going well, um, pertaining things continue to go well, we'll probably stick with this group. In BFA, they were on Alliance, things kind of fell apart towards the end. Um, and then as we kind of sat down and discussed it over, we kind of realized that I don't know if we'd actually be happy with this group. You know, maybe making some changes would, would actually be better. And, and obviously one of those changes was going to be what can we do to avoid having to find new homes all the time, especially towards the end of an expansion. Um, but that can be a topic for another episode. But I, I say that because at the time of all that was going down, you know, I had pretty much told Oreo and everybody else that knows me, I'm going to play... I, I played a ranged class the entirety of Legion, and I played a different class every single tier of rating. And I usually swap to a different class towards the end of each tier to get it geared up for the next tier. Um, and so I started as Fire Mage, I went Frost Mage, then I went Shadow Priest, then I went Warlock Destruction, then I went Elemental Shaman. Um, and, uh, and obviously along the way I've done a little bit of healing here and there when my groups have needed uh, and but yeah I've been a ranged cluster all and so I said originally I'm going to do a melee DPS and I'm going to play a class that I've never played as a main before um, and after going through this project and making some decisions to start the TRC group um, and kind of approaching things from that perspective my whole mentality on this choice completely changed um, with obviously not giving away the cat, you know the the prize here. Um, I will say that my original choice for a main uh, isn't anywhere close to what I've ended up on. But for me, past that, my criterion has always been, you know, what. Let's change it up. Let's do something different. Uh, what haven't I done before, or what haven't I done in a long time? Uh, what looks fun? And obviously, then I look at, you know, obviously from the fun perspective, which classes that look fun to me are performing well or are speculated to perform well. And then I usually jump into that. 
Um, and then now that I, you know, we're back to running our own group and that kind of stuff, I'm much more heavily considering, you know, my decisions based on what does the group need, that kind of stuff. Well, how can I best continue to do my job within the group with what class I'm playing? Um, you know, and that could translate into composition. Obviously, I'm an officer right now. I'm also the GM. So uh, during a raid, even though I may not necessarily be the raid leader, I need to be paying attention to things. You know, what classes do I feel comfortable paying attention to things on? You know, obviously, some classes are a bit more difficult to play, whether that be just from a personal perspective or in general. Sometimes those may not necessarily be best suited for being an officer, being able to, being, being it required to pay attention to multiple things throughout a raid, that kind of stuff. Um, and so my criteria have been a little bit differently, but unlike Marty, uh, I'm nowhere close to my original decision uh, for my main. Uh, Am I close to my original? You said you already knew what class you're going to play when we started this project. Oh, you? okay, okay, like that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I thought like my current. I mean, I don't know where your actual class lives, Marty. You're in Denmark, so I don't know how far away you are from your actual class. You know. <laughs> nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> I don't know if that can even be proven, but, you know, there are drugs that are powerful enough to make it seem like it can be, so. But, yeah, it's, um, I gotta say, up to this point, you know, it's been kind of fun, um, but I guess there's no point in really kind of dragging this out anymore, so. Um, you guys want a real shambo on air to see who goes first? Between you and, you and Oreo there, Marty? Uh, I was gonna say, I think Marty <laughs> wants to go. Look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I can start. Yeah, go ahead, Marty. Walk us through it and how you came to your decision. Well, basically, I wanted to do something else than healing. Um, I wanted to be, because I think that I'm going to have a little bit more of a busy year this year. So I wanted to have a little bit l less, you know, I'm, if I'm a DPS, then I'm easier to replace than if I'm a healer, for instance. So that was one of the the considerations. And also, I, I've, as I said, I've, I've been mainly healing throughout my whole World of Warcraft career. So I wanted to, to try to do some DPS for a change, see how that world works. Um, so I have a lot of alts, so I've already played a lot of them on, la on, on the current live. Uh, and one of the, the classes that I really fell in love with towards the end of the expansion uh, was uh, Elemental Shaman. Um, so I decided to, yeah, say, no, I'm not going to play Monk. Uh, I'm <laughs> going to play Shaman. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and, and Shamans also have, like, they have a, a melee spec and they have a healing spec. Um, so I have that, the, the opportunity to, to, to switch out and do something else if, if needed or if I wanted to. Um, so I thought uh, um, that would be a good choice. It, it's also one of the, the classes that I've actually never rated as. So um, because I've rated as Paladin and Druid and Hunter um, as well throughout uh, all these years. So it, it had to be a class that was different and um, than just one also than ones I've already played, and it had to be a DPS class. So, but I'm also a little bit. I'm looking forward to see how it will. Be when you actually get to max level because it, it seems like elemental shamans is not in the best position at the moment in, in the beta and people especially elemental shamans are, are, are uh, a little bit uh, complaining at the moment how how the outlook to, to bfa looks so so people have also been asking me if i'm 100 percent sure that i want to go that that way but um i i made up my mind fairly early so I, I have my trust in Blizzard that they will fix something eventually. So we'll is see that, how it goes. Is that one of the things like, hey, Marty, are you sure you want to go elemental? <laughs> no, Marty, you're not understanding us. We don't want you to go elemental. <laughs> you know, is it one of those? <laughs> I, I, I don't hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got to say, as someone who currently mains a, uh elemental shaman, I've really enjoyed playing it. Mm. Um, I have felt like in Legion that that class has been competitive and versatile in almost every single fight type, be it cleave, AOE, whatever. Um, and they have a huge toolkit at their disposal utility-wise yeah. between stuns, interrupts, dispels, that kind of stuff. Offensive dispels, you know, uh, I think the only thing I really ever felt like I was lacking on it was um, survivability, you know, other than 130-minute mm -hmm. immune, which you lose your food buffs and stuff to just to use. 
uh, hasn't exactly felt great, but um, no, I was I really enjoyed playing my Elemental Shaman, uh, and I do say they do feel a little bit weak comparatively on on live right now, or sorry, beta. But I do I do know that Enhance is doing really well on beta right now, so at least you have a backup plan if you need it. Yeah, exactly. So, but um, we'll, we'll go see ahead. how it goes. Yeah, no, yeah. I'll just say we'll, we'll see how it goes. And your guild, your <laughs> guild so far has been pretty supportive and okay with you. You know, you started out this whole endeavor um, when I first met you. You were an officer, you were a healer, you know, you were not sitting out raids much. And, you know, now it's gotten to the point where it's like, hey, you're the holy priest. You can't move. We're not bringing you to raid. And now you're no longer wanting to play healer. I mean, everything's still copacetic and good to go. Yeah, yeah everything's good to, to my knowledge. Yeah, I don't have any, th- any problems with them. I don't think they have with me. I don't <laughs> hope so, at least. At least then I hope they'll tell me if they do. So <laughs> well, we'll we'll get the we'll get down to the scoop, you know the the nitty gritty of it eventually because we'll get Chloe back on the show and get her opinion, you know. Mm. So, <laughs> Chloe, if yeah. you're listening, I want to know the deets. <laughs> uh, but so I guess we'll move on to Oreo now. Um, Oreo, why don't you kind of walk us through your decision? Yeah, I mean, we also touched on before, but also having. Uh, group composition. Um, we have a core group of officers that we all kind of sat down and said, well, we would definitely want to fill at least a variety of roles so that in the event that something happens, we always have an officer there to do that role uh, no matter what. So having that core was definitely, uh, I guess, an important thing going forward. Um, we didn't want to have um, a lack of a certain uh, spec like healer or tank or range DPS or melee DPS. Um, so I think everybody just kind of gravitated towards uh, what they wanted to play, but also um, what they enjoyed as well. Um, so for me, I have decided to play a resto druid going forward, and now that might be a little bit surprising because people who heard me rant and rave about Demo Warlocks being the greatest thing ever. Um, and I have played a Warlock this entire uh, tier. Um, but going forward with the needs of the group and the general playstyle of Resto, I really do enjoy. It feels quite impactful. Um, way back at the beginning of Legion, I was Disc Priest when Disc was absolutely terrible and they wouldn't bring you no matter what you did. <laughs> Um, but I've really gravitated towards healers at the beginning of expansions, but I actually feel that with Resto Druid, it'll stay strong and relevant throughout the whole expansion, and that's something that I really do enjoy about it. Yeah. Um, how much of our experience, you know, through all the stuff that we've gone through, has been an influence in you getting to this point? You know, would it be the vast majority, not the vast majority? Well, seeing as how, how quickly we kind of went from group to group to group there at the end of the expansion, just trying to find somebody who would um, stay together long enough to try and get as far as we could into mythic content. It was kind of a big thing because a lot of the groups that we dealt with were always super short on healers. Um, I remember when we were on Agrimar, and there was nights that we just we couldn't do it because we only had four healers on. We didn't have the fifth or possibly even sixth if we needed it. And you know that's not something that you want in a group that like we've put together here. You don't want to be like, oh, sorry guys, we can't do this tonight because uh, we're we're missing our like a quarter of the core part of our raid. That's one of the worst feelings in the world as an officer. And I remember, you know, when I was raid leading AOI, you know, the guild that Oreo first met me on, it I hated it. We struggled almost every night with that. It's like, well, like, do we go back to flex content just so we have something to do? Or do we call it a night, you know? And almost nine times out of ten, it was like, well, let's go back to flex content. Because, you know, you always run the risk of pissing one or two people off and having them sit out for the night doing flex content but you really run the risk of having half your raid group go somewhere else when you don't do any content at all you know so it feels like a lose-lose situation but it's in bfa that they're introducing flex mythic right 
<laughs> oh man, no, oh, there's I can just see the rumor mill firing up right now. <laughs> Pretty sure I heard that somewhere. Marty is joking. Please do not take that seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm getting a, you know, I've always wanted to talk to the WoW devs, but next thing I know, I'm getting a, an angry letter. Your <laughs> podcast is spreading some really bad rumors and causing us a lot of headaches. <laughs> um, Like, yeah, I always wanted to talk to you guys, but not this way. <laughs> but, yeah, so Oreo's rest are Druid, Marty, you know, Oreo and Marty are doing the flip-flop thing here. You know, one from healer yeah. to DPS, the other from DPS to healer. Although, Oreo, you dabbled as a healer for a little while there. In Legion. Um, you know, as for myself, uh, I, you know, obviously I changed mains with each tier, and I, I had said from the beginning of Legion, kind of to myself personally, I'm going to stay as a ranged player throughout the entirety of this expansion, and I did just that, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I got to try out something new each expansion, or sorry, tier. But for me, I, you know, I, I'm kind of the hypocrite in the sense that I always tell people who join my groups, like, don't worry about playing a class that other people are playing because when you have 20 people in a raid, and most of the time if you're in a mythic group, you're going to have 25 members roughly or more. And so it's almost impossible to not play something that somebody else is playing as well. You know, um, and but I've always been that person when I've been an officer. I'm like, what do we not have? And I'll go with that just because I, for whatever reason, I've always liked being kind of on my own with my class or you know, one of a few people playing that class. Because there were a couple of times where I shared um, classes and roles with people in our raid groups, and it was fine. Um, but, you know, that was kind of one of my biggest thoughts of going into this was, you know, what can I do that's different for me, but also unique for the group? You know, I don't want to just be the fifth warlock this group runs with or the fifth demon hunter, you know, whatever, from that perspective. And, and so I kind of base missions on that and then obviously I, you know what of, of those classes which ones are fun or which ones are doing well or are speculated to do well um and then at the very end of that when Oreo and i made the decision to uh start this group and with the other three officers from uh, one of our past guilds it was kind of like okay we've thrown a whole different thing in here now and i have to pay attention to that as well and so originally I was planning on playing an assassin rogue going into bfa i was really excited about it um i've never mained a rogue i've a lot of expansions I've leveled one up as an alt. Uh, and then within two or two weeks of trying to play as an alt, it gets pushed to the side and I don't, you know, touch it again for the rest of the expansion. So I I had a one ten uh on BFA that I played quite a lot uh quite a bit. Sorry, Legion that I played quite a bit and then I leveled uh started testing a bunch of Assassin Rogues just because Blizzard kept deleting my characters on beta and alpha. Uh, but, you know, I was really enjoying it, and then Ori and I made the decision to start this group, and like I said, that kind of threw a wrench in the, wrench in the decision here, and so we kind of, I kind of had to reapproach it. Um, and my decision literally was not set in stone until last night um, when I finally got some information I've been waiting on. Ooh. Yeah, um, and so up until last night, I was very, very heavily leaning on playing a Protection Paladin, and I've been playing a Protection Paladin now that I'm done raiding on the Shaman um, for a while now, for a little over a month, maybe a month and a half or something like that, maybe two months, I don't know. Um, and he's like 960, something like that. We've been doing Heroic and Taurus and really enjoying it. But um, some information came out last night, and as of last night, um, going into BFA, I will be playing a Brewmaster Monk. And so I am getting to check off that one box of what class have I never mained before. And <laughs> I have never mained a Monk before, and I've leveled one as an alt a couple of expansions and have just never really touched it past reaching max level. Um, so, you know, I've been playing on it a lot last night and today I'm trying to get it geared enough to do the mage tower quick before Tuesday hits and we get pre-patch. Oh, spoiler alert. Pre-patch is coming Tuesday. Um, Wednesday for your period. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, as of right now, I will be playing a brewmaster monk going into BFA and I'm really excited about it actually. I was about to make a joke earlier when you said that the two that me and Oreo were doing the switch of ruin. I was about to say, "Oh, so Ryan, are you going tank?" And I should have said it. Why didn't I do it? <laughs> yeah, Ryan is going tank, um, and that was part of the decision. Was you know what what position can I be within the raid group to provide a consistency? And for me, I kind of want a position um, within the raid comp that I can, for one, never get sat for. Um, 
so he thinks. Right, yeah. yeah. My officers have been joking that they're going to bench me, and I'm not the raid leader, so I, I don't have all the power. Um, but, yeah, so they're, uh, right now I'm going to be going as a Brimesh Monk, and, and this way I can kind of sit back and watch the group and kind of help. Um, well, whenever... you are talking, watch the, the boss crutch is what you're meaning, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the other, the other guys are going to get the rear end, and I'm going to get the front end, so. Mm. Our, uh, our NPCs will be well serviced. <laughs> <laughs> uh dirty joke of the day but yeah no it's um i'm really excited uh monk especially the mechanics are a bit different it's taking it's you know it'll probably take a little bit to kind of get used to especially with like right now i've been it, just from today alone it's i've been picking it up pretty easy between managing the different brews and the stagger mechanics and all that kind of stuff but um i do know from my testing on on beta with the GCD changes and the the healing reductions, it's going to be different, you know. And that's not just for Brewmaster Monk. I know even on my Paladin, I I don't have the ability to hit Shield of the Righteous or Light of the Protector um, whenever I need to. It's you know, it's I have to plan for it a little bit more. Um, and so it's going to be a bit of an adjustment, weird. And then you add into the mix the whole threat meters and stuff like that. And I think BFA is going to be uh you know harkening back to some of the past expansions where threat meters have mattered, things haven't been quite as easy, the class has been a little bit more simplistic. Um so it's going to be interesting going into this. Um I'm getting from Twitch chat they're also at the front though. <laughs> no, I am not I am not playing Miss Weaver. Thank you Twitch chat. I am playing Brewmaster. We already have a few other Miss Weavers in the guild, so don't think we need a third but yeah um but yeah that's that's the big reveal guys i know it's not probably not as exciting as everyone would have hoped but um i'm I, excited yeah i know i am yeah. really too this is probably uh the most excited going into an expansion i've been for a while now and bfa has some big shoes to fill legion was a fantastic expansion i don't we i personally don't think we've seen this good of an expansion since arguably bc and wrath Wrath, yeah. You know. Um PC was alright. We'll quote him on that later when it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. I am I do see this is weird. I, I think this particular expansion with BFA has potential to be a fantastic one, or it really has potential to be another Warlord of Draenor, where it's like, what in the actual F is this story that you've created and what in the actual F are we still doing here in this tier of content nothing can be like warlords unless <laughs> they bring unless they bring garrisons back and i haven't seen any like proper garrison related stuff in the beta so far so you heard it here first guys uh, garrisons and goldan are coming back mythic raids are going oh to flex um literally everything yeah. that would spell disaster for the world of warcraft um marty is predicting yeah yeah well mythic going to flex do you think that will be a disaster i i do yeah, there's I think... a reason why they got rid of Zen Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, that's not to say that it won't happen at some point. You know, maybe when the game becomes free to play and everybody's playing. You know, fall, uh, what's for your face free to play, right? Yep, there you go. Ooh. You heard it here first. It'll be <laughs> Battle Royale, World of Warcraft. Yeah, I heard that as well. Uh, an another major announcement from Marty. A prediction, you know. <laughs> BlizzCon. I'm, next... on, I'm on a roll today. Yep. This yeah. year, BlizzCon, the open source World of Warcraft. You can mod and do whatever you want. <laughs> it's going to become yeah, make Minecraft. Your own, make your own servers. It's yep. fine. Go crazy. Yep. It's going to be World of Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the title of this episode, Big Predictions from Marty. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's been fun. Uh, this this both season one and two um, of TRC. It's kind of you know the, I would say that's first year of creation. I know we've spanned over two different calendar years, but I don't think we've quite been um, recording episodes for three hundred sixty five days yet. But you know, um, I would say definitely season one and two have been the first year of this podcast. It's been a lot of fun. We've had a lot of characters on the show. Uh, Dan and Cole were my co-hosts initially. Oreo and Marty are now here. You know, Dan and Cole are off doing those fun things. So I definitely want to say a big round of applause for those guys. Uh, Dan has kind of taken on a different approach to the game. Uh, if you guys want to go find him, he's been doing a lot of streaming for his Mythic Plus stuff, and I think he's going to continue on with that and, and BFA. I'll, you know, I'll link him. Role playing, right? Yep, role playing. Um, been wearing yep. a lot of dresses in real life. Um, 
But, you know, on all jokes aside, I definitely want to say thanks to those two guys. And big thanks to Marty and, and Oreo here. And as we move forward, hopefully they will continue to go down this project path. I think things have been going well. Uh, big shout out to, you know, I got to say, one of the guys initially on most people don't realize is a good friend of mine, Joe, in real life. He was on the very first episode where we talk kind of what it takes to run a guild in a game like this. Uh, he ran a very successful mythic and cutting edge guild for, I think, five years. Um, and he recently has stepped away and that group kind of have all gone their separate paths. A few of them have a project I actually will be announcing on this show at some point, um, but there it's early on that I can't say much. Um, but he has been instrumental off the air um, for me, kind of getting this show off the ground um, and doing a lot of the guild stuff. So I want to say a big thanks to him. Another big thanks to the Raider.io and the Ask Mr. Robot guys. They were two of our biggest guests early on. Um, and I've actually kind of developed a friendship with them and I, I stay in touch with them regularly. Um, and they're both going to hopefully be back on the show before uh, BFA hits. I know we have a scheduled date for the Ask Mr. Robot crew. Raider.io, they've been a little bit more busy. Hopefully we can hash out a date here soon. Um, but if not, we'll get them on relatively quickly after launch. Um, and then you know, hopefully we're going to have some good stuff moving forward. So I do do want to present this opportunity to those of you listening. If there is any type of show that you have liked in the past, let us know. If there's any type of show you think we should do, let us know. Uh, we are definitely open for feedback, and we definitely want to do things better moving forward in BFA. Uh, and hopefully stay consistent. I know we've had some breaks along the way. But those were just kind of some of the growing pains with the, you know, with this whole endeavor. And real life as a college student at the ripe age of 31 years old, living in his parents' basement. Um, you know, just the various things. You know, Marty's got a significant other now. And like he said, he's got some real life things going on. So it's it's been a learning process, but it's been a lot of fun, I got to say. Uh, it's a bit of a shorter episode this week. Uh, I know Oreo's got to go soon. And really all we want to do is get on here and just kind of give our reveal and say what our process was and say a big thank you. Uh, and we will have a few other episodes before BFA drops, but uh, I definitely wanted to give this opportunity to Marty and Oreo to see if they had any, you know, last minute things they wanted to add on. So I guess Marty, I'll throw the mic over to you. Yeah. Just kidding. I'm going Mr. People Monk. <laughs> <laughs> Liar. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to go on Holy DK. <laughs> guess I'm playing Arcane Mage. <laughs> So yeah, no, thank thank you for inviting me on this podcast. It's been it's been a fun fun ride so far, and uh, and uh, looking forward to see what's what's going to happen in the, in the next uh, few years and going forward. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's been a pretty all right, I guess. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the there's was good. there's the worst Canadian I know. <laughs> he's like the only Canadian I know that's grumpy when he's sober, and he's never nice. <laughs> That's so opposite of what a Canadian is supposed to be. You're supposed you to, know. you're supposed to fit the stereotype, man. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. There you go. Are you happy now? I said sorry. We we profile around here. I, I hope I didn't know if you know that. <laughs> but yeah, I know it's been fun. So um, we will have some more topics of discussion when we do our subsequent episodes before BFA launch. Kind of talking any last minute changes that come out. Like I said, we'll have a couple of interviews. Uh, Marty and I have a very big announcement coming here very soon. Um, we've actually taken some strides and gotten our, our new project started. Um, and we're very close to getting that announcement. So we'll be looking for that. Um, and other than that, you know, I just want to, again, last minute say a big thank you to each and every single one of you that have been here along the way is whether it's been a, uh, a listener, a co-host, a guest, you know, all that and above. So I think that's going to do it for us. Do you guys have anything else before I hit these last two buttons? Nope, I'm good. Cool. I'm, good. I'm getting the thumbs up for those of you listening. So I'm going to hit these two buttons. We're going to get out of here, guys. Thank you very much, uh, and we will talk to you next week. See ya. If you guys want to find Marty, you can find him over at the Blizzard Podcast he does, where they talk all things Blizzard games, the Blue Recluse. If you want to find him on Twitter, you can find him at Unamethil. For me, guys, if you want to find me, and personally, you can find me over on my Twitch and Twitter, which are both at Gaming, or you can find me on my All Things Blizzard podcast, which I do with my good friend Dusty Porter, the Blizzard Umbrella, if you want to find us here on the show, you can find us at our Twitter account, which is at underscore TRC podcast, or you can find us on our email, the Raiders confessional gmail.com. No apostrophe on the S. That being said, guys, Dusty, take us out of here, my man. See ya. Sorry, I died. Was I supposed to stand in the green puddles or the orange ones? <laughs>
Okay, get together over there, bud. This show has been hosted by Dragon Powered Studios, and the intro and outro has been brought to you by Thankful Cow Solutions. Moo. <laughs>